Bun just hit 1.0, and that means we're ready to go to production. And as the author of Bun's first complete tech stack, the Beth stack, that makes me really excited. But what I'm even more excited about is all the upgrades and improvements that have come to all the different parts of the Beth stack since I made the original video. So let's run through those one letter of the stack at a time, and if you stick around to the end, I have a little spoiler for my next video. Starting with B for Bun, obviously, it's been really exciting to see so many new people trying Bun for the first time and just being totally blown away by the speed. Installing packages with Bun, running scripts with Bun, it just it feels so fast, and that's awesome. Since the last video, we've gotten news about Windows support coming, which is still experimental for now, but definitely in the pipeline. We also got debugger support and a ton of performance improvements just all around the board. Moving on to E for Alicia, and things just continue to get better. Alicia now has JSX straight to HTML string support out of the box, which is awesome, and it's built on a new package called Keta.js slash HTML, which is two times faster than the typed HTML we were using in the previous video, and has an ahead of time compilation mode, which can be up to 1500 times faster. So huge performance wins there. Also new is that Alicia is Winter GC compliant, which means that it will run on almost all supported runtimes, whether that's on Cloudflare or Dino or Vercel's Edge runtime, Alicia can support it. Finally, Alicia's performance is now rivaling even that of Axum, which is one of the most popular Rust web frameworks. When I saw this for the first time, I almost couldn't believe it, but it's true, and Alicia plus Bun is just that fast. It's incredible. Moving on to Terso, Terso is still awesome. It's one of the best and most flexible edge databases out there. While they're not out right now, Terso has some really cool features coming out in the next few weeks, and one in particular will impact our stack a ton, and it will actually increase our read performances by two orders of magnitude. I'm serious. So definitely keep a lookout for that. Finally, HTMX. You may have seen some of the really cool view transition examples with Astro 3.0 coming out, and the view transition API is actually just a native DIME API that anyone can take advantage of, and HTMX has first class support. To show you what that might look like, I made a little example app, so let's take a look. So here's the example, and as you can see, when I click to these different routes, the square is getting animated between them. And this is only, there's no CSS transitions going on here. This is just the view transitions API, which is super cool. You also may notice that we're not doing the HTMX kind of swapping in place. These are full page transitions, but the browser isn't reloading. And there's a couple cool things that we're doing to enable these features. So first is HX boost equals true, which turns all links into kind of the swap in place that the rest of HTMX does. So it fetches the content in the background and then swaps it in place seamlessly. Then to enable view transitions, you can do it on an element by element basis, but HTMX has a global option, which I just enabled in a script tag. And then to kind of move the box, we have to give it a unique name. And I actually, I tried to do this with a special Uno CSS rule for like an hour, but I could not get it to work. So. It's just in a style tag for now. But as you can see, here's the box. It's just a div with some color. And when we give it this unique name, now it can transition between the different states. Very, very cool. The final thing going on here that is probably impossible to tell from the example is I have the HTMX preload extension enabled. And then on the links, I have preload equals mouse over. And this means that when you hover over a link, it will automatically start fetching that content. These features, such as view transitions and HX boost and HX preload, brings apps using HTMX just up another level of user experience and allows them to compete with fully client-side routed frameworks. And the results kind of speak for themselves. I mean, this is really, really cool. And it's really exciting to see how good we can make the client experience for a server-first framework. All in all, I really believe in the Beth stack, and it's awesome to see wins just across the board for its components. And as for that spoiler for my next video, I'm currently working on a complete Nothing to production ready B2B SaaS app tutorial built with the Beth stack. It's going to be long and detailed, but I think it will be a really great showcase of what the Beth stack can do. So if that sounds like something that interests you, you should consider subscribing and definitely turn on the notifications. Let's be honest, I don't post that often, so you'll want to know when I do. Until then, if you want to see me build a basic to do app with the Beth stack, you can check out the video on screen now. And other than that, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.